Hello everyone, so this is just another quick update about various things that have come my way in the last uh, couple of weeks or so. Um, firstly, uh, I've got an interview hosted on this Truth Summit website, which has been put together by Elsa Scheider. I did mention this, I think, in the last update, but this video is now available free for the next day or two. I think she sent me the notification late. Uh, you can see it's available there until... Um, that date so you might want to log on and have a look at the page you can probably find the URL to it and everything um, she's very kindly put all these links in and uh, you can have a look at some of the other interviews free for the next two days if you explore the site but after that she's asking for a contribution to the uh, you know, work she's done um, and I think it's nine, it's not cheap $97 but you do get some bonuses for that an ebook and so forth so you can go onto that site and explore that uh, if you wish, and she's put links to all my books on there, or a link to the page on my website, etc. Um, so that interview is a little bit different to other ones that I've done. I sort of it's more of a um, bi bi biography, really. I suppose you might say, a bit more oriented around that, and then going into the 9/11 research that you know I got involved in, and you know those regular viewers and listeners will have heard it most of it before, one or two bits and bobs, um, perhaps discussed but they're fairly uh, you know um, minimal really so have a look at that at your leisure um, so the next thing then is an update from Richard D Hall another update and I've been communicating with Richard over the last week or two and now what he sent me and what we've posted between us is the case documents for the court case so you know uh, you can go and read those in other words the, the original claim from Martin and Eve Hibbert that you can see here and I've arranged it such that you can sort of scroll through these you can make this page bigger and whatnot you can download these PDFs if you so wish and then Richard prepared a defense with the help of a barrister uh, and that's also posted here and you can go and sort of compare the points and see the silliness of their claim really uh, quite frankly and some of the things that they've put in their claim are not even relevant really to the Manchester uh, events in any way particularly so that's all a bit weird there were certain filing anomalies as well which we may get more information on later it may have been nothing but we, we did notice certain filing anomalies with the dates which were a bit strange so uh, if you watch the video update that Richard has done on on this page here I've got I have all the links for you of course as usual in the uh, video description um, you, you can you know find out what Richard thinks of the case and how it's been instigated and stuff he, he has spoken about this already on one of his earlier updates but you, you know he, he gives a bit more analysis of that and again it's all a bit peculiar the BBC here it seemed to be involved in all of this um, so it's not just a case of the Hibbets randomly coming forward after however many years um, three years to uh, try and go after Richard you know and then there's a, a GoFundMe page uh, which has been taken down um, but I think the link is still there and he's asking if you do want to send funds for the defense because th this might go on quite a long time you know he'll give you a few more details in this video here if you watch it about what he thinks might happen um, so you know you can have a look at that um, and you can download the book and things for free and watch the other videos if you wish so those are those two things uh, and then now switching tracks again uh, we will look at the latest thing I think I can't remember whether I um, um, looked at this in the previous video update but this was quite interesting in that this is in the Guardian and it's gone round all the press and we've had this uh, David Grush uh, interview military whistleblower on UFO retrieval there is the full link available on Ryan Sprague's YouTube channel um, and uh, with David Coulthard who's an Australian journalist who's followed the um, ET issue ET craft and so forth quite well um, he did do an interview with Scott and Suzanne Ramsey regarding the uh, Aztec crash that was um, or a year or two ago you can probably find that somewhere on YouTube I don't have the link here but that I think was quite significant um, again this is all old news uh, and I'll go into that a little bit more in a minute but what's interesting is that this is now being put in the Guardian and other places and they're talking actively in these stories about UFO crashes and retrievals um, and you're know, saying we are not alone and uh, all of that so is this uh, feeding into the uh, 
you know alien alien invasion agenda uh, possibly uh, and uh, We've got the journalist Leslie Kane and Ralph Blumenthal involved in this as well. Leslie Kane is basically a limited hangout. She doesn't really, you know, go beyond military testimony, uh, really, and, and, and that sort of area. She doesn't really go very deep. Um, so she's very much limited hangout uh, on this, although she did do some good uh, reporting in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s to bring to the attention of... Um, uh, world you know the the cometa report in france which i've written about uh, oh, i've got mention of nick pope here um yeah so uh, nick pope is doing his little usual thing of uh, you know saying the right words for a particular audience or a particular uh, scenario um so the links are there you can go and watch the interview i haven't watched all of this interview myself because as far as i'm concerned it's old news without mention of 9-11 and what happened then, which factors into all of this, it's of no interest to me, really. So somewhere in this story, uh, sorry about the glitch in the video there, um, there is one of these coverage of this, one part of coverage of this story, I don't think it's in this Guardian article, talks about the weaponization of technology, which is, that uh, seems to be new, that, you know, the, the discussion of, Weaponizing this reverse engineered technology is, is not very common. Um, but then feeding into this, um, we have, for example, uh, our old friend, Dr. Stephen Greer. He has done another disclosure project event. Um, and um, that uh, is, I listened to most of that. Uh, I didn't watch all of it. I listened to watch some of it and listened to the rest of it. And he's got six uh, new witnesses rather than the 21, but it's basically just a repeat of what he did 22 years ago, um, you know, and um, there isn't really a lot new to me in this. I'm trying to find the slide that uh, he had up. I think it's this one. Let's see if I can get this back to this. Um, oh, yeah, so he, he, you can see here he's wanting you to um, uh, write to witnesses at SeriousDisclosure.com. So he's still collecting witnesses. He's still t asking people to write to Congress, which is what he did 22 years ago. Uh, our, goal, our goal is to acquire and develop a zero-point energy system to release it open source freely to the public by 2026. So this, again, is a repeat of Seize Power and uh, Aero 2012, Serious Disclosure Technologies, Orion Project, which I've written about in my book, um, so please do look at the chapter on Stephen Greer. It's chapter 20. Let me just go down here a bit and see if I can get that up, um, wherever that may be. So in my book, there are there is a whole chapter on Stephen Greer. And, uh, you know, please do share and download and read this book or whichever is the correct order of, of doing that. Um, because, you know, he's... Um, a key figure in all this, so you need to know as much as you can about him. I've done a lot of research into Stephen Greer over the years, and um, so you know I've, I've put all that into this book. He's not who he appears to be. Uh, he basically admitted a few years ago, about six, seven years ago, that he works for the CIA, and uh, that's all in in my book. As I say, obviously, if I can find it here in chapter 23, there going critical. So please do have a look at that and uh, see what you make of it um yeah and, and so you, you, i go through all these free energy initiatives that he that he went on about and there's been you know he it, there's been no movement in 20 years he's just an information collection agency i think for the cia that's his basic job some of the new witness uh, testimony is interesting um and worth listening to um but by and large it's it's old news again um so if you look at this uh, website he's done, uh, I don't think there's much free content on here. I think maybe the video, the press conference video is free, but that's free on YouTube anyway. There's got this new film, The Lost Century, which I presume is about the last 100 years of, you know, essentially UFO cover-up or getting close to that now. Um, but, you know, it's a very glossy website, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, there is this... Um, interesting section in the disclosure press conference about the underground bases where he claims you know that there are all these facilities um i did that was covered i think in the original disclosure project 22 years ago which uh, of course is what set me on this journey two years after that in 2003 when i found it um so you know you can have a look 
at uh, that information if you wish. Um, and yeah, so this whole thing about serious disclosure technologies as well in the serious disclosure, well, uh, that's possibly uh, uh, got an occult significance because you know, if you read things like Morals and Dogma by Albert Pike, he talks about Sirius. You can search for Sirius here on this link um, and see what he says about it. You know that it's it's relate, related to occult rituals uh, and it's related to what happened on 9-11 as well um, because the, there's, you, know, you can look up, look up uh, S.K. Bain's book most dangerous book in the world according to SK Bain about the 9-11 mega ritual which has you know serious references within that as well. I'm just trying to find this other slide uh, from Greer's presentation um, and see if uh, you can see again uh, I'll, I'll highlight one figure on it to see if I can find that. So on this slide that uh, called the extraterrestrial red line in Greer's disclosure presentation it says at least 119 ET craft have been down near or over the earth so that means more so why was this 119 number chosen I wonder because that's a 911 number um, so Greer I would suspect is probably a Freemason um, if he isn't himself then uh, those around him probably are in his discussion he does mention towards the end there's, there's a Q&A at the end some fairly okay questions some of course are the usual ones that come up um, and uh, he talks about Richard Foch again, which he mentioned in this um, discussion um, about 9-11 when he was asked the question about directed energy weapons uh, by, that's all covered in my book as well, his, his um, discussion or non-discussion of that, that's all in there. Um, but Richard Foch apparently was head of, um, Richard Foch was head of the anti-gravity projects uh, or something I knew about them according to Greer, what Greer says in his uh, press conference video towards the end. I haven't heard him say that before um, but anyway um, there you are, I think I'll just go to, oh yes, to mention before I close, a dark journalist has done um, a discussion of the latest revelations with this David Grush, or are they really revelations perhaps not the latest old news perhaps and uh, he's done a video about that so you can watch that if you wish Recommend, as recommended to me by my friend Jenny. So um, I think that's all I wanted to say for now. So um, again, thank you for listening. Thanks for your support. Do download the books and share the books because they are free online um, and see what you make of those. And I will talk to you in the next video. Thanks again.